Hi there, welcome to a special session of uh, Meet the Leaders here in Albany as we're kicking off a new session today. And oh my, this is going to be quite the session, there's no question about it. We're pleased to have Assemblyman Steve Otis visiting with us today from Rye, uh, handling the 91st District in Westchester, and it's good to see you, Steve. Welcome. Great to be here, David. How are you? I'm doing very well. It should be a good year. It should be a good year. It's going to be an interesting year with uh, the Dems holding firmly to both, both houses this go-around, which is something they haven't been able to do for a number of years. Is that going to make a big difference in the uh, areas that you're interested in? Well, there are a number of pieces of legislation that have passed the assembly uh, every year and then uh, well some good things have passed in both houses many things stalled uh, because the Senate under the old leadership didn't want to move on some of those issues so we're going to be tackling a lot of a lot of stuff that the assembly has um, passed in the past that now the Senate will pass. Um, I think one of the things that should come up early is a lot of the election reform matters that make it easier for people to vote and uh, bring a little more democracy and, and access to the electoral process and uh, those will be those will be good changes and uh, but across the board there are a lot of issues that affect uh, affect people in Westchester County, that uh, we can improve things in the area of housing and environmental issues, and uh, certainly a big issue is always more aid for our schools. It's important to get state aid to our schools to try and buffer the level of uh, uh, burden on the property tax, and so what we do in Albany, our job is to try and direct um, more money to the state aid pot statewide and have that money come down to our school districts. Is, is that, is that a, a so-called lockbox that will uh, no. keep it from uh, flying away in the general fund? Or, no, uh, the general the general way state aid for schools works is there is a formula based on a set of criteria, and uh, we may tweak some of those things to deal with certain issues in in different years. As a as a member, I'm looking for the needs of the individual districts I represent to try and see if we can maximize the chance that they can get increases for specific things that they need. English language learners is one category, special ed, uh, and making sure that our districts get, get a fair share. It's very important to the quality of the schools and that they can hire the full complement of teachers to do the job they need to do. So, big commitment for me. Well, and, and for the entire state, let's Absolutely. face it, and obviously it reflects itself throughout the country because those people don't necessarily stay only in New York, so that, that's critically important. You mentioned uh, educate, uh, election reform, and many people are, are concerned about having added days uh, for the voting cycle. Uh, early for, voting. Early, early voting. voting, if you will. Uh, some have mentioned up to 12 days, is that right? Well, I think it'd probably be less, but uh, I think that the bill we passed in the past was nine days. Uh, but actually, I represent the only community in New York State that has had early voting. Uh, really? uh, for the last 10 years, the village of Porchester, because of a uh, federal litigation with the Justice Department, has had early voting. Uh, uh, for the last 10 years in their village elections and it has been very positive. It has not been too burdensome to operate and what it does is a few more days it gives people the flexibility that maybe can't vote on the normal election day a few days before they come to village hall and and uh, there's a table out there and and uh, they're able to vote in advance and it has worked well so I think that when I think we will pass this in both houses this year for statewide uh, early voting uh, but I can tell you from the experience in Porchester, it has worked well and it has made the ability for people to vote uh, that much easier and it's an important thing. But theoretically, um, it, 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 it sounds like a great thing. Unfortunately, from a cost standpoint, uh, those added days add up pretty quickly financially. Well, it's not that costly because uh, the reality That's is nice to hear. You, you don't open all your polling places. Right. You have centralized polling places around a county, or in this case, in our village, we had one location where people came. And so it really doesn't add that much more cost. And we're going to have other savings in other areas of election reform uh, by consolidating um, the primary dates because we have now three different primary dates in oh New York my. State on different days which makes no sense so hopefully we're going to take care of that and that's going to save a lot of money so I think these re reforms will be good and we'll, we'll, do, we'll do a good job. Interesting. Um, you being on the water, your, your uh, uh, constituents 
uh, know only too well the difficulties that we've had with uh, Long Island Sound over so many years. Are you seeing positive change and, and uh, a positive direction that it's going? Well, the water quality in the Sound has gotten better, but the initiative that I've been most involved with uh, started in, in uh, 2015, the Water Infrastructure Improvement Act, which is a new state grant program to provide grants to municipalities to do clean water infrastructure projects. And so we just, we've had now four years of the program. We've had tremendous support from Governor Cuomo, who in 2017 made it the most significant part of his two uh, and a half billion dollar environmental program. And so for- Is there new w water treatment or improved well, water it's, treatment it's plants? Well, it's pipes, it can be plants, it, but it also can be uh, re restoring pipes and uh, where we have, um, on, on the sound, sure, we have a lot of uh, pipes that are 100 years old that have to be replaced. And so uh, this past year, 2018, um, $270 million went out statewide in these grants. The year before is $251 million. And by 2022, the program is going to provide somewhere between $1.8 and $2 billion in grants to municipalities to do water projects that would otherwise be on the property tax in, wow. in our state. Wow. So this is uh, my, my real passion because I, I uh, was a mayor and know the cost of these things. Sure. And, and uh, we want these projects done because it's good for the environment. We want them done in a way where they're more affordable for the local governments. And that, that's what this program, which has been a great success, is, is doing. And the, the state agency that's in charge of administering it is the Environmental Facilities Corporation. They have done a great job of rolling out this program and working with municipalities on their projects. That's very exciting, Steve. Listen, uh, so glad you could stop by kicking off this. Everybody is as optimistic as they can be for our first day of a new session. Nice to see you. We're here to do good things, and, and uh, I feel lucky that I get to do this, and I feel lucky I get to be on your show here, and, here. and uh, for the Meet the Leaders again. So Our pleasure. Steve Otis uh, with us, one of those great legislators who's taken over for a new session. We'll see how it all works out as it winds up and winds down the year. For Meet the Leaders, I'm David Smith.